Last Friday, first quarter earnings season kicked off with three major banks, J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, and Citigroup. And then on Monday and Tuesday, we heard from Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and Bank of America. These results came during a rocky period for the overall market, which is one reason nearly all the big bank stocks sold off hard. But some of them got hit a lot harder than others. More importantly, when you actually go through the quarters of the action, the banks just doesn't seem to reflect the quality of the numbers. J.P. Morgan got killed. City got killed. Bank of America got killed. Meanwhile, Wells Fargo and Goldman were flat, and Morgan Stanley was up at a decent amount over this three-day period. So tonight, I want to walk you through what we heard from the big banks, because these are some of the most important companies out there, and they give us a tremendous in- amount of insight into the rest of the economy. They often are predecessors to what's going to happen after. The insight only matters if you really know what happened, rather than just extrapolating from the tape, which is what most people do. So we're going to start with the four big money centers, and then we're going to go to the two major investment banks after the break. Yes, these are that important. Let's start with J.P. Morgan. Now, this is generally considered the best run, strongest bank in the country, even as the stock was hit the hardest. If that wasn't because uh, it wasn't, it, you got to understand this, it was not because the numbers were bad. J.P. Morgan delivered a top beat. Uh, bottom beat with 8% earnings growth. That's terrific. Average loans up 3% when you back out their acquisition of First Republic. Loans are up 16% when you include the First Republic numbers. And why not include them, for heaven's sake? J.P. Morgan had extremely solid expense management, too. Their credit metrics mostly look good. In fact, this bank's provision for credit losses came in a nearly a billion dollars lower than expected, down 32% versus the previous quarter. That's sensational. Well, then you're probably asking, what the heck went wrong? Well, you could argue that J.P. Morgan's Core net interest income, this is this NII thing, forecast for 2024 was only raised by a tiny amount. Wall Street was hoping for higher for longer rates would help them post bigger net interest margins, which many banks are having. Didn't help the Jamie Dimon. He was so cautious in his comments. But mainly, I think the stock had simply run too much in the quarter. It was up 15% year to date, 52% of the previous 12 months, right before the company reported. Hey, throw in the ugly market that day, and you had a recipe for a sell-off, even though the numbers were just fine. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com. Or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.